Hello, this is John S. Rhodes of the Rhodes Brothers. This is Greater Wealth Through Mastery. The topic of today's short talk is the three and only three ways to get website traffic. Now, before we talk about these three ways of getting website traffic, we must first understand a key principle. That key principle is traffic. And what is it exactly? What is website traffic? So many people screw this up. They think about it as clicks or they think about it in terms of views. They think about the data or the metrics. They care about the numbers. But the reality, the very root, the truth of website traffic is that it really is about humans, real people who are visiting your website. After all, do you really care if bots are visiting your web page? Probably not. Most people care about having real living human beings hit a website, a web property, a squeeze page, an opt-in form, perhaps some kind of sales page that will convert people or entice people to purchase something, maybe to opt in, to get a gift and so on and so forth. So it matters very much that we are focused on real people who are visiting a website. Now there are other things that we could care about, but this is the topic of today. The three ways to get website traffic and the only three ways to get website traffic. Now, those three ways are build, buy, and borrow. We call these the three Bs, build, buy, borrow. Building traffic at the very, very high level is organically created traffic that attracts people typically through a search engine. Now, that means you're not spending money, you are spending time to build up content that people care about. I'm gonna go into that in just a moment, so hang tight. Now, if we talk about buying traffic, just as the name implies, you're spending money and typically not too much time to get a load of traffic, a load of real people to visit your website and perhaps do what you would like them to do. What you would hope them to do, of course, is to take action on what you have on that website in most cases. So you are spending money, not so much time to get that result. So that is buying traffic. And last, and certainly not least, you can borrow traffic. Now, borrowing traffic is the one that most people don't think of and very few people talk about. Borrowing traffic means you're not spending too much time and probably almost no money, although you can sweeten the deal. And what you're doing is you are partnering up with other people. Now, some people talk about having sponsors or they talk about joint venture partners or traffic partners. Still other people talk about this in terms of having affiliates. And those other people are affiliated with you, care about you, and want you to do well, so they will push traffic. Now, why would they push traffic or otherwise entice or encourage other people to visit your web page or your website? Well, the reason is very simple. There is typically a financial incentive that you provide, a cut of the action, so that they get compensated for pushing traffic or directing traffic to your website. Okay, so this is a great way of leveraging partnerships and relationships that you have with other people in your market or your niche or niche. And as a result, everyone wins because not only do you get traffic or your business gets traffic, they make money when a sale occurs or a transaction of some sort occurs. There's lots of different pieces and parts of that we could talk about. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to know more about how to make money. You can also find some great information down in the description below about how to use artificial intelligence to make all of this happen and find that below. This is what's great though about having a joint venture partnership. You can have a casual conversation, let the other partner know what it is that your partners, what it is that you've got, 
what is high value, what their audience would care about, and so on. Now, we can dive deep, deep, deep into any of these three, but that's the high level. Again, to summarize at this point, you can build traffic, that is, create content and share it and then encourage people to find you typically through a search engine or perhaps online through a social site. You can buy traffic. That's going to be maybe Facebook, perhaps Google. It might be on YouTube. It might be through other paid channels. And there are lots of ways of doing that. For example, paid newsletters. There's just so many different ways to spend money to get traffic. And you can also um, borrow traffic by working with partners and affiliates. So again, that's the quick summary. Now what we're going to do is we're going to walk through each of these through three in greater detail. So if you want to create your own traffic, one of the things that is really, really smart that is sort of behind the scenes that many people just simply don't think about is you can craft questions to get engagement. I'm sure you've seen online quizzes, and I'm sure you've seen websites perhaps like Quora where questions are provided and answers are provided, and it's basically a forum. So you can go on to Quora and you can ask questions, and you can also go on to Quora and answer questions. So Quora is one of many of these types of question and answer websites. But the principle is that you can ask questions and generate engagement on social media as well. That could be Twitter, Facebook, it could be many different websites, and these are gonna come and go over time. But the idea is use questions because people love to engage, they love to answer, they love to feel good. They also like to see the answers that other people are providing to the questions that you're asking. So it's very smart to ask smart questions. Smart is smart, but also by asking questions, you get freely generated user content. So you generate the question, but you get a ton of feedback, especially if you answer questions yourself or if you ask intelligent questions that get a lot of engagement. So, so many ways of getting people involved and in building traffic through questions. Another thing is the advice is you want to keep it short. Very, very often, especially on social media, really long drawn out questions, really long content generally does not work on social media. Now, when it comes to articles or blog posts, when it comes to posting on your own website, really meaty pillar content, stuff that people want to share, that's a totally different ball game that is absolutely different. So if you're trying to create a reference, perhaps a FAQ, right, frequently asked questions, then it makes sense to go long. Typically, you want to do that on your own website, or if you're guest posting on someone else's website, then it can be really intelligent. But in general, if you have to go one way or the other, it makes sense to go for quantity, keep it short, try to get engagement, see what works, and then go long. So start short, but then go long. And use social media first, see what resonates with people, and then use that as great feedback to then generate longer content that you post on your own website, or perhaps you even generate videos as a result. For example, what you're engaged in right now, this experience you have is obviously video, and you can do a million things with video as a result. Very, very high leverage content. We have more information about that on this channel. Take a look around and you'll see exactly what I am talking about here. Another thing is, is that if you're generating content and you want people to be attracted to what you've got, use eye-catching content. And in particular, use eye-catching visual content. So great thumbnails, great icons, great images that just really grab attention. For example, you might have a, a YouTube thumbnail. You might have an image that you post on Twitter. Um, it might be something mysterious might be like a spy photo. It could be something from inside a membership or inside a product, or it might just be something that just resonates with people emotionally. I can't stress that enough is that when you really resonate with someone emotionally, then they tend to stay engaged. And if they stay engaged, they're likely to do more of what you want, which is read, consume, listen, watch the video, whatever it happens to be. This is very, very important. Another thing is, is a secret 
is you can go to other websites and you can partner with other people and it can still be organic. For example, you could be doing a lot of guest posting on other people's blogs. This is kind of a combination of generating organic content and also partnering up with someone else. In other words, it's kind of building and borrowing traffic all at once. Remember the three B's, build, buy, and borrow. But you can build a lot of traffic by guest, guest blog posting, writing guest articles. It is really an amazing thing. So you can resonate with someone else's audience by doing guest blog post. And by doing that, you're gonna get clicks over to your website, to your property, to your videos, to your sales pages. Just make sure if you are guest posting and you're guest blogging, that you are coordinating with whoever it is that owns the website when that's appropriate. If it's obviously a large platform, then that's a little bit different. You don't have to worry as much. Another thing is to get organic traffic, and this is pretty incredible. It's something that most people do not do. We've done this many, many times. I'd say at this point, we've done it hundreds of times, and that's updating old content. So what happens is, is when you post content, it's fresh and new, obvious. But what you can do very, very often is you can go back and look at some of your old content that is maybe 80, 85, 90, 95% relevant but it's just a little stale, it's a little bit old. So you can go back and freshen it up and relaunch it. You can do that in a very simple way by adjusting the title. So if you had mentioned something, you know, 2021, 2022, 2023, and now it's farther than that, 2024, 2025 and beyond, well, you might just wanna change some dates, that alone can immediately freshen up the content. Now. That only applies if the content is evergreen, of course, but if you need to go back into the content and make some quick edits, it can totally be worth your time, and then you can put it back out. You can tweet and post, and you can share it again, and now it's freshened up. So many people miss out on an opportunity to update old content and get a boost in brand new organic traffic. In other words, building that traffic by putting in the time and then people will come and visit you. So, and Google loves this, by the way. Google loves it when you update old content. I would say two more things about updating old content. Number one is if you can add video to your old text content, that's a secret right there. That is really, really valuable when you can update your text content or text and image content and drop in or embed a video. So feel free to shoot a video and then embed it on a page where it's just a blog post, maybe with text and some images. It can go a long way. The other thing that you can do is make an editorial update or make a time update. Let me give you an example. So you might have a, an old article on something, something maybe even just a few months old, but some new technology comes along or a new idea comes along. Uh, maybe you have new data, new statistics that you can share. And if that's the case, you can go back into that blog post or article and say, hey, update, you know, uh, the 2023, 2024, 2025 update, or, you know, December uh, 2024 update, right? Depending on the time of year and what's going on, you can go into the content and add a timely, literally a timely update and put a time step in there and say, hey, this is what's changed. You can put an editorial content uh, update in there where someone's gonna read that and go, yeah, I, this worked a year or two ago. So you can say, you can actually literally say that. This worked really well a year or two ago. Here are the little minor changes that you need to make in order for this technique, this tactic, this approach, this strategy to work now in this month at this point in time and beyond. But again, the key point is, is going back to content that you've already got, leverage that, exploit what you've already got, um, you know, don't start from scratch every single time. That makes no sense. So again, build by borrow. We just covered some key points and some secrets behind the scenes about creating your own traffic by, by building it. And there we go. Those are some tips, tricks, and tactics specifically for building and rebuilding traffic. Now, next, we can talk about paying for traffic. Now, one of the very, very most secret ways 
that you can buy traffic is going to very small, just getting started, barely established influencers who don't have wild and crazy reach because people are already going to them. People are already saying, hey, uh, I wanna spend hundreds if not thousands of dollars to piggyback, spend money to piggyback on the traffic of very large and powerful influencers. So what you can do is you can find rising stars. They're gonna be way more affordable. In fact, you might even be the very first sponsor of a micro influencer. You're probably gonna hear more about micro influencers in the future, but you heard it here first. And you can be one of the very first people to jump on this trend. In other words, going to these very small influencers and say, hey, I've got a small budget, I see that you've got a great following of people that would probably love the content that I've got available. Would you please post or repost something about your, you know, the website and here is some compensation as a result. Heck, you could even do like a little mini joint venture partner with them and say, hey, any sales over the next few days, we'll split the profits. So there's lots of ways to work those deals. If you're interested in micro-influencer deal-making, definitely below let me know in the contents okay we got the um we've got the description there take a look and also in the comments let us know if you're interested in, in that topic okay now another thing you, you can do is you can pay for ads on very specific niche websites or niche websites so the idea there is you don't need to go to google or to facebook um, or even YouTube, you can go to a, you know these very, very specific websites and pay for a sponsorship. Okay, that might be, mean for things like banners or a video, it might be just a link. You'd be, it'd be crazy to ignore these folks because you can go and find the exact people that are interested in your topic, your offer, what you have on your website. So go ahead and look for those people and they're, may, they might have tiny little itty bitty websites, but it doesn't matter. That means that you need to spend less money, but these people are more targeted for what you've got available for them on your own website. So basically niche down, niche down, niche down, go into the micro sub, sub, sub niches and um, our markets and you'll find some of these websites and it will cost you less and they'll be higher quality folks. Another thing you can do is just very, very simply um, on Facebook, it's, this is an easy tactic. You can post a lot of content and then you can boost that content um, for $5, $10, next to nothing. Try it out for a few days, see what catches. Sometimes these things catch fire and this is a very, very affordable cost effective way to see if your content might just need a little kick in the pants and it might go viral. And you don't have to spend like hundreds or thousands of dollars to make that happen. You can just spend five or $10 over a few days and see, hey, does this boosted post actually work? Does it resonate with people? So you can pay for that traffic with a very, very small budget. We've done this time and time again. I will tell you that most of the time, the secret here is that most of the time, it will fail, okay? Because you know that going into it though, you know, let's say one out of 10 succeeds, well then you can just pour on the gasoline onto the fire and make that grow and do more and more and more on that topic. You can go in and find ways of actually paying way more to get way more traffic now that you know you've got a piece of content that people really resonate with and really care about. So that's how you can figure that out fast versus setting up something that cost 500 or thousand dollars you spend maybe a hundred or two hundred dollars versus thousands. Find out what works by doing simple blog um, or simple um, simple post uh, boosting, and then from there you can just do really really well because you've already identified what it is that resonates and works with people. And it's obviously smart to do pay per click versus just wildly spending money. If you do pay per click and it's targeted well enough, then it can be very very cost effective. So the the key here is just you know, going into sub, sub, sub markets and see what really works, what really resonates with people. And that's the key here again and again. What is resonating with people? What, what is it that you're putting out that is on the same wavelength as the people that are consuming your content? Very, very easy to do, very fast to do. You can have a very small budget, um, but the key is, is not to just spray and pray. Don't just spend hundreds or thousands of dollars 
and, and hope that you're going to find a micro niche that's going to work. Instead, do one and then another and then another. I mean, you're smart. Let's face it. You're intelligent. You know your market pretty well, better than what Facebook probably knows. So you can start already at a, at a lower level and see what works with a much, much smaller budget. Now, I, I suppose there are people out there who have much more money and then what they're willing to do is spend those hundreds, if not thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars and then Facebook or other the other platforms that you can use, they're gonna tell you what works and then you market to those sub markets or those sub niches. Tell me what you think about that. Do you start off smart and small and target based on your intuition and gut? Or do you let the platform figure it out for you with their AI? Both of them do work, but if you have a small budget, it's obvious what you do. Use an educated guess, sub, sub, sub niches, market way down, and then go from there. If you have a large budget and money is no object, then obviously let the platform figure it out for you and then go from there with what actually is working. So many different ways there. I've only given you a uh, sort of a handful or sampling of ways of using paid traffic to, or pay, spending money to get traffic that's paid traffic. So, so far we've covered organic traffic, building traffic, right? So building it on your the sweat equity. And then we've talked about buying traffic. So build and buy. Now in this last few minutes together here, we're, we're going to take a look at working with others or borrowing traffic. This is probably the most exciting because it's so misunderstood. In fact, most people don't even think about borrowing traffic. But what you do is you spend time networking with other people with the purpose that you can help them. You can provide value to them and their community. I want you to think about that. Since all web traffic really comes down to humans, all the good web traffic at least, you wanna start with an audience of one. That audience is you, and then it's an audience of two, you and a joint venture partner. The very, very best customer you could ever get, or customer, would be a joint venture partner with just loads and loads of traffic that they are desperate for great offers and great opportunities, and they're looking for people just like you. They actually are desperate for great offers and great opportunities. So very often you're able to partner up with people who have very large audiences and they're looking for something fresh and new, and that's what you can bring to the table. You can help them out. And in fact, you can do things like work with a partner and say, I'm gonna give you 100% of the profit. Now, why would you give away 100% of the profit? Well, the answer is obvious. Maybe it's not. The reason is, is that if you give your joint venture partner, especially if you're small and weak and they're large and strong and they have all the traffic and you want that traffic so bad, well, you're getting the traffic so people are seeing your content, seeing your offer, which is wonderful, it's lovely. There's a branding component. Maybe that's what you were thinking. But the other reason, and it's really a critical reason, is that when people buy, when they buy, guess what? The partner makes all the money, yes, but you get buyer's leads. Your email list grows your email list grows and all the people that are coming onto your list through that channel, through that mechanism, where you're giving away 100% of the profits, even though you're not making money, you're getting people onto your list who have money and are willing to spend. A buyer's list is the most valuable list, way better than friends and family, way better than tire kickers, way better than people who are looking for freebies, way better than pretty much any other type of list. A buyer's list is a money list. That's how people make 10, 100, even $1,000 per buyer on their list because they are actually buyers on the list. And this is why it works so well working with partners. Now that's a secret that very few people understand. You might need to go back and watch this video to see that and understand that. It's very, very exciting. Another thing you can do is use affiliate programs. You can set up your own or you can work with other affiliate programs. You can cross promote. 
with influencers. You can go on to social media platforms. You promote them, they promote you. So almost no matter what size you are, no matter what, no matter how big your list is, in other words, if you have like 100 people or 100 followers, find someone else with comparable numbers in terms of their, their email list and their social reach can be very, very small. But you can start your network, your inner circle. You can work with those people and you can all grow together. When the pie grows, everyone wins. And that's the secret right there. That is the secret, is don't try to overshoot too much. Now you can try, you can definitely definitely try, but if you're not really sure, you're uncomfortable, then the thing to do is to find people around your size and network with them and then you cross pollinate, you cross promote with them. That's how you can work with others. Again, very few people think about the numbers and, and what that means and how you can actually work with people and make everyone's life better. You can do podcast tours you can go on and be a guest on podcast. You can share your knowledge. You can share your passion. You can really get into stuff and share your energy, your reason for even being online and selling. It can be very, very fun. It can be entertaining. It can, it can be wonderful. You might be like a robot, but you could be the best robot in the world. You could be the most factual, uh, the most information dense information provider. I've seen great people on podcasts who do that. And then you can have the people that are, you know, wild and crazy and, and fun and, and, you know, throw out jokes left and right. There's all kinds of, of people, all kinds of content out there. You will resonate with some people when you're able to get on podcast. And last but not least, you can give away free tools. You can give away free bonuses to other people. Again, this is about partnering up with other people who already have traffic or an audience of some sort, but you can give away free bonuses. And the way you do that is you say, let's say that they're selling something. You could say, look, I'm gonna give you a free bonus. All that I would like is on the, on the other side of a purchase, they have to opt in to my bonus. So imagine this, someone comes in to a funnel, they land on a page, they buy, and on the landing page or in the members area, they're able to get your product absolutely free. But what you get in exchange is their email address. So these, again, these are buyers leads. These are people that are buyers that are getting onto your email list or that are now following you. And this is how you can work with other people who already have traffic comparable traffic or more traffic and heck, and heck, they might even have less traffic than you, but it's still worthwhile to work with them because there's so much overlap in what they do and what you do. And now I know we covered a lot, but really this all comes down to build, buy, and borrow. Those are the only three ways that you can get traffic. There are no other ways. So the question is, what do you think? Does this fit with your experience? What did you learn new that's most important? Please let me know in the comments below. My brother and I look very closely at the comments and we just love to know what you think. Also, please send this episode to someone who might benefit from the message and the advice here because it's word of mouth referrals just like yours that help the channel grow and we're able to provide more free training to you and help you out. As always, the Rhodes Brothers do appreciate your support. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you in the next training. Thank you and take care.